Yo, I'm back here with competitive analysis videos. Start of a new gen. I have to bring this back. This is uh, like competitive analysis videos are my favorite ones to make. So I wanted to be sure I was going to be able to do them for gen 7. So for this video, it's going to be the top 10 Pokemon in Sun and Moon. I will probably make a follow up video to this in like maybe like two or three months when the meta you know starts to kind of build bands come in and that kind of thing basically these are the top 10 sun and moon mods so these this is not going to include genesect and pheromos uh, it's going to include pheromos but it's not going to include like genesect age slash landers all those guys that came back this is just like the top 10 ones in terms of um the mods that came from sun and moon so solgaleo and lunala aren't going to be in there because i mean i don't play ubers so uh, these are basically just going to be the ones that definitely are the that have stood out the most in gen 7 like the tier itself um so yeah let me uh basically i guess i can just hop right into it so at number 10 i had tapu fini now uh all the tapus as we know are some of the just best pokemon that have been introduced in the meta um and the game in general they all have very very nice typings uh, incredibly good stats tapu fini was something i didn't like very much but when i started using it i started to truly see how good it is uh 115 base defense 130 base special defense is incredibly tanky especially with water fairy which is like super super solid typing um, it's able to switch into uh, stuff like Greninja if it doesn't have Gunk Shot and Wall that thing. Um, it's able to eat a hit or two from Landorus. Uh, can switch into Genesect um, if they're not having having Thunderbolt because it resists like Ice Fire Bug and all that kind of stuff. It has a really, really, really nice typing. Uh, it's only weak to Poison Grass and Electric, which is really nice, and it's resistant to six typings uh, with Fighting Bug, Fire, Water, Ice, and Dark. Um, not to mention it's just immune to Dragon in general, so it's very, very nice. It's very, very tanky. Um, I was playing with this and I had a Specs Latios and I went for Psy Shock and only did 40%. It's a very good Pokemon. Um, you know, I mean, and it is defensive, but it comes with 95 base special attack and 85 base speed, which is actually really nice for something that's meant to just kind of, you know, tank hits and go from there. Uh, the only downside I've really found with this thing is that its move pool is rather shallow, but I mean, that's not that big of a deal because water... Uh, Water Fairy and um, Ice, if they pack Ice Beam or like HP Fire or something, is more than enough coverage. Um, not to mention that, um, you know, it's kind of just supposed to stay there and just kind of soak up hits, uh, you know, throw out some attacks and that kind of thing. And it does hit hard enough to where Moonblast and Scald is really all you like really need on it. Um, I know people have experimented with the Calm Mindset. That is something that I have not really given a chance yet just because I would rather use something, I don't know, I'd rather use something else. Um, as my prime attacker i can see it working well as a bulky attacker but yeah um tapu fini you know it's a good pokemon as of now uh, it's really good at just walling things out um being it's a good switch and it's like a really nice pivot and i say pivot over wall because you switch in something like skarmory or ferrothorn they're not some a big offensive presence but this thing like i said it has 95 base special attack it's not easy to switch into like i brought this thing into wall someone's uh, grinja then they went to tapu coco and i went for a moonblast and moonblast did like 50 percent to them so it's not like they could switch in again like it it hits hard which is really really nice uh and not to mention it has very very good bulk so yeah it's just it's a good pokemon um definitely something that i can see rising for sure uh, not to mention that it also um does a good job at kind of dealing with Ferramosa if they don't poison jab because it resists fighting bug and ice um so that is another thing it's just a good pokemon in general again the only thing that i really uh dislike about it is that it doesn't have recovery which really sucks because like tapu coco got roost i don't know why this didn't get roost i thought all the tapus should just get roost but uh here we are so that is the 10th one the 10th best one let me get into the ninth best one so well, here we have none other than Celesteela, basically the new Skarmory on the block. This thing is very, very cool. Um, when I first saw this thing's stats, I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. Uh, it had a good move pool, had a high attack stats, high attack, high special attack. Uh, I had Flamethrower, which is very, very interesting um, for something that looked the way it does. And uh, honestly, it's become a very, very, very obnoxious Pokemon for a lot of teams to deal with. I was playing versus this thing, and it's so bulky to the point where it's just very, it's just very hard to take down. Uh, I mean stuff like lander's eye which is in the tier and is so so brutally strong is pretty much hurt pretty badly by celesteel's presence because life Orb focus plus only does like 36 to 43 um to the spadef set which i mean not to mention focus plus doesn't hit first of all and they have leech seed and protect on most of them the fact that they got leech seed is just really frustrating for a lot of teams to deal with because it wears them down steel flying again is such a good typing because it only has two weaknesses and fire electric and it literally resists um like 10 things which is just it's immune to two things and it resists eight things so i mean it's very very solid typing especially when uh um it has such high hp and just a good defense and good spadef uh, i really want to toy around with some kind of offensive set but it probably isn't that good just because i mean it's move pool is you're kind of limited to like grass moves steel moves fire moves i mean and yeah that's like that's like it <laughs> and it's not it's not even um I don't know. The one of the things that really um, stands out about it though is the fact that it has a 120 base power heavy slam because this thing is super fat. It's fat as shit. It, it's like 
um, what's it called, like, 2,200 pounds in the game, so it's like, it's able to hit everything with, like, full-powered heavy slam, which is really nice, because it's one of the best checks to fairies. Um, I was using this thing, um, and it could beat Aegislash quite nicely with, uh, Flamethrower or Earthquake, uh, in combination with Leech Seed Shadow Ball that has a really hard time wearing it down. Again, another thing that really pissed me off is the fact that it has, um, it, it's a flying type, um, but, you know, it doesn't have Roost, which really, really sucks. Not to mention, it has Beast Boost, which is kind of cool, uh, if something dies in front of you or you kill something, because, again, this thing, similar to Tapu Fini, they're bulky, but it has the offensive presence. It's very, very nice. Um... Because, like, 101 base attack and 107 base special attack are nothing to scoff at. So if something dies, you're just boosting your defenses even higher and higher. Um, it's not, like, a super top-tier threat, but it's definitely clearly uh, in the top 10 in Sun Moon. And it definitely has its uses. I have it on a couple of teams. Um, and it works very, very nicely at just walling things out. Landorus, Latios, things like that. They just, they can't really take an issue. They can't really take advantage of, um, Celesteela because it's able to set up the leech seeds. It hits very hard with Heavy Slam. Um, which is really really nice as well. So again, it's one of those tanks that has a nice offensive presence um, And just does a good job in general of being able to take on a lot of the threats One of the things I think that kind of hurts it It also hurts Tapu Fini and also hurts the next Pokemon I'm gonna talk about which is Toxapex is just the rise of electric types with Tapu Coco and uh, Zerka Tree, which is the 181 special attack. I think 181 maybe 183. I don't know whatever It's a super high special attack tail glow Pokemon the the like rise and electric sort of hurts it But even then it's just insane the good typing uh, really does it a lot of good stuff So yep, Celesteel I did have at number nine So like I said number eight was going to be uh, Toxapex Toxapex is a very interesting Pokemon when I first saw it I was like, okay, it has good typing, but it's like whatever It's probably not gonna be that amazing and it's really really good Toxapex is phenomenal uh, if you guys do not know its stats, it has only 50 base HP, so it only hits 304 points max like Rotom, so it's not that good. But it has 152 base defense and 142 spadef. It's so stupidly bulky. Um, the typing, Water Poison, it's like, I mean, it resists a good amount of things. It resists 8 things and it's immune to nothing. And it has some annoying weaknesses like Ground and Electric, uh, Psychic, but it's resistant to such good offensive typing. Fighting, Ice, Fairy, Water, Fire, Bug, all the really nice offensive, like, uh, coverage moves that most teams have it just they can't break it Genesect basically walled unless you get a plus one special attack boost and then you have to Thunderbolt If you don't get the plus one special attack boost uh, Toxapex walls Feramosa completely walled they cannot beat it um, And that's just insane Aegislash walled if they Scald burn you and you don't get Spadef drops you're done They don't even have to Scald burn you if you don't get Spadef drop you're going to lose to Toxapex 1v1 That actually happened to me because it kept recovering um, it also has Regenerator, so it can switch out. It has uh, options. It has good support options like Scald. Uh, first of all, it's extremely weak. Tox it's Tox like is stupidly weak. A 53 best special attack isn't doing it any favors. But it has access to Scald, which, as we know, the most busted move in the game. Um, uh, what else? It has Haze, which is really nice, so it can't be taken advantage of by setup sweepers. Uh, I've seen people use Toxic. I use Toxic personally. So basically, all you really need is Recover, Scald, and then you have like Haze, Toxic. Toxic Spikes is also an option um, that I've seen a couple of people use. Uh, it's really, really nice. Um, it has that move, Baneful Bunker, which is its signature move, I believe, which is basically just like um, protect. Uh, but if the opponent makes direct contact with the, on that turn, like with their attack, uh, they're going to get poisoned, which is really, really cool as well. Like it's a very, I haven't really used that uh, protect set because I mean it has recover. It seems like kind of like a waste of a spot. But Toxapex is definitely one of the most and more like more annoying Pokemon in the meta game for sure. Um, it, it's just it it's literally unkillable. Honestly, if you don't have like a very hard hitting special attack, it's going to run upon your team, and it just it's it just pisses me off. Like. <laughs> Toxapex is one of those Pokemon where it just sits around and it just forever annoys the shit out of your team. And it's it's good. It's good in that regard. It's a very, very, very nice pivot um, with what it can do. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's things like Lander's Eye still in the tier that make it kind of hard. And Lander's T and that kind of thing are going to come up. But something I haven't even seen in the metagame at all right now is Keldeo. Tepu Fini on the rise pretty much blocked it out. This thing on the rise pretty much blocked it out. Like, um, water type, offensive water types in general just don't really exist anymore with these uh, this guy. Um, and Tapu Fini in the back, they like are just really good at blocking most of these things out. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I have for number eight. Um, Toxapex, just a really annoying one in general, but it's a very very good pivot for offensive teams to have, especially the fact that as regenerator makes it just unkillable. Um, I've seen people use Rocky Helmet to punish U-Turners, and it does a phenomenal job at that with re uh, regen because it already resists. So with that, let's move on to the seventh best. For this one, I had Tapu Bulu. Now. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, that was the one that everyone was hyping up in the beginning because it, it's it's crazy. Um, it's the one that it's the uh, one of the tapus. Um, it is the grass fairy one with 130 base attack and grassy surge. Uh, so basically, um, 
Grassy Surge sets up Grassy Terrain, which strengthens grass type moves. Uh, it gives Tapu Bula recovery, and it basically makes this thing's wood hammer hit incredibly hard. This thing is this this thing is absolutely insane. Uh, to give you an example of what it can do, um, it KOs Latios with the Choice Banded Wood Hammer. It just kills it. Uh, Mega Charizard Y dies after rocks. That's a four times resist, by the way. Genesec takes around forty-seven percent. Again, four times resist. Uh, Banded Megahorn destroys Tangrowth and Amoongus and that kind of thing. It's it's very very cool. This Pokemon. Um, it's definitely bulky enough with one fifteen base defense, ninety five speed up, seventy HP. That's pretty nice. Um, and its its attack is just super super good. The speed is a uh, average seventy five, which is fine. I mean, like honestly, you don't really need too much speed on this thing because it's bulky enough to take uh, most hits, and it can just destroy everything in its path something i've seen people use is leech seed bulk up or just sub sub leech seed in general uh with horn leech and the thing is it's so hard to beat because its attack is so massive and it's so strong like i saw someone using leftovers horn leech this dude switched in his extra drill, just straight up oko just straight up oko by it like just died 100 gone and horn leech is not that strong of a move it's 75 base power but when you're coming off 130 base attack and you're already at plus one thanks to grassy surge it's really really hard to deal with this thing um, it's just, it's very nice Pokemon. Uh, it's resistant to some good typings like, uh, fighting, ground, water, grass, electric, dark, can't even get hit by dragon type moves. Um, and again, it does, uh, have the necessary bulk to be able to eat one or two hits up, which is just, I mean, it's, it's very good. Uh, the sets I've been seeing people use is Woodhammer, Zen Headbutt, uh, Mega Horn, um, and then some people use Super Power and some use Stone Edge. I personally don't use Zen Headbutt, I use Stone Edge and Super Power, um, which is fine for me. Super Power is really, really nice. I could let you snipe stuff like Heatran and Super Power is just a nice move in general to be able to use because fighting coverage is so good. Um, but yeah, Tapu Bulu, it's, this thing is nothing, nothing short of a savage. Like, you switch it in and it's, it's just gonna kill everything. Like, it's amazing because the typing is also very, very nice. You straight up wall stuff like Landorus, T, and Garchomp, which is crazy good. Um, and it just, it's 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 so whack dude like the power this thing has landers t gets straight up blown away by Woodhammer. hammer chomp destroyed by i think uh this def helmet chomp has a chance to die after rocks to banded wood hammer which should tell me how many pokemon can use a neutral move against garchomp a uh, helmet chomp and kill it like nothing like literally nothing can do that um so that's like it's like absolutely phenomenal um but yeah it's very very good pokemon um, it's very, very fun to use as well. I recommend if you're on Showdown or you're in your game or whatever, just try this thing out. Try Bandit, try Leftovers, try whatever you want. But the second you click that Wood Hammer and you see that person switch into the Resist and it takes like 80%, you'll know. You'll know you picked the right Pokemon when you put this boy on your team. He's it's absolutely nuts. So, yeah, that's why I decided he was worth the seventh slot on this team, most definitely. So, the next thing I have is one of the Ultra Beasts. Um, I have Buzzwool. Now, Buzzwool is really, really cool. Um, I, at first, I didn't actually really want to use it just because Feramosa sort of like kind of seems to like outshine it but that's definitely not the case um after i like used it a little bit more in fact buzzwool is very very good so um it is fighting bug like uh Feramosa is um the only difference is this thing is a little bit slower but it comes with a little bit more bulk so it has 107 hp 139 attack 139 defense uh 53 spadef which is pretty bad um and 79 speed which is just kind of mediocre um, it's typing is alright, I mean it can resist fighting which is really nice and it's pr it's actually the best counter to Feramosa, unless the Feramosa is special in which case you're getting blown away by Ice Beam, Focus Blast, Bug Buzz, whatever they want to go for. But um, yeah, this thing is very very nice because 139 base attack is really cool. I've seen two sets uh, basically. Uh, the one set is Banded um, with Leech Life, Super Power, uh, Earthquake, and then Poison Jab, which basically gives it perfect coverage. And again, when you're coming off 414 attack, this thing's attack is stupid high. Um, you're just going to be killing everything in your path. Not to mention it has Beast Boost, so again, it's going to be getting EVs. Uh, I mean, it's going to be uh, boosting its attack every time it kills a Pokemon, which is very, very nice. Its speed is just good enough. 79 is just good enough, especially with the bulk it has. Um, so, you know, be doing good work, so that's also very, very nice. And it's just, like... This thing is really, really good. Um, I've been using it a lot. Another set I've been using is Sub 3 Attack. CBB told me about that set, and we were using it in the live, you guys might have seen it. It does a ton of work. Sub Ice Punch, Horn Leech, Earthquake, because you don't really need a super, you don't really need fighting type, you don't really need a fighting type move, um, because all it really hits is like Skarm, and that thing's gonna wall you anyway. Uh, Earthquake can take care of most steals regardless, um, or Leech Life. Um, and its Fizz Def is so nice to the point where it can take most hits with its sub. I know we EV'd it, gave it a little bit of HP and a decent amount of spadef, that way it can take some special hits uh, pretty nicely. It can set up on Toxapex, uh, Scald with its substitute and it's cleanly to it KO with Earthquake. Ice Punch and Horn Leech, you know, give it fantastic coverage. It's really, really, really good. Like, I cannot, like, man, I know I'm, like, just telling every, like, saying everything is really good, but this Pokemon has something that totally, um, 
what's it called, stood out to me. Uh, and I remember in my and when I made that video with my Pokemon Sun and Moon team, I had no idea what this thing even was. And I was like, I want this guy on my team because he looks so powerful. And it really is just, like, it is so strong. Um, and its bulk, its physical bulk is, like, stupidly good, uninvested. I, to give you an example, a Choice Band Tyranitar, uh, Stone Edge versus this thing, does 58 to 68. That's with no, that's with no defense whatsoever. No defense whatsoever. Uh, Max Attack Landers T Stone Edge only does 27 to 32. Uh, which is stupidly good. Uh, so if you put some HP in there, you're going to be easily eating it up with your sub. Um, like, Metagross Zen Headbutt can't even OKO it with no attack investment. I mean, with, uh, with I mean, Max Attack Metagross Zen Headbutt can't KO it if it has no, even if it has no HP or defense, which is just, god, it's so sick. Beast Boost alongside sub is really, really nice. Um, it's really, really nice. Because, you know, you just keep getting boosts and you're able to eat up most of the hits. It also has uh, the option Roost. I don't really like Roost just because I want to give it the most coverage you can get, but... Yeah, I mean, it's it's awesome. It's really really fun. It can soak up most hits. It it can basically you can basically EV it to wall stuff. Well, not really wall, but really be, you can EV it to be able to switch into stuff really easily, like Megalopony, uh, Bisharp, Excadrill, that kind of thing. Um, it's probably my favorite Ultra Beast. I like it more than Feromosa. Feromosa is pretty brainless. You just look high jump kick, but this thing you kind of need some sort of strategy with it. And its coverage is really nice. It has great bulk. It's it, I think it's gonna make a big splash in OU, especially once Feromosa gets banned. I feel like people are gonna really find out different things to be able to do with this guy, and it's it's gonna do great i'm really looking forward to seeing what buzz will, will do in the meta spl uh ladder all that kind of good stuff so that's what i had at number six now number five um i have none other than the pokemon that i don't really know how to pronounce okay i think it's Magirna, but everyone's saying it's Magirna. i'm about to go on bubble pd i'm fine now all right they can't really help me anyway we have measure whatever man i'm just gonna go ahead gear okay so we have this pokemon steel fairy it's this thing i wanted to use it very bad because its design was so sick and amazingly enough um well when i first uh saw it i was like dang it its stats are so good 80 hp uh 95 attack 115 defense and spadef 130 special attack but then i was like 65 speed man it's not gonna be good and damn i was wrong this thing is so so good oh my god okay first of all steel fairy is in my opinion the best typing in the game after steel ghost um, this typing is absolutely flawless. When you resist nine types, you're immune to two types, and you're only weak to ground and fire. Which, I mean, those are common typings, but, Mag like, okay, whatever, I'm gonna call him Magirna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, ugh, whatever, man. I'm just call him Magirna. This thing's defenses are so good that it can just, it's so fat, dude. It's so fat. 115 speed up, 115 defense. Like, I usually throw this thing into any attack, and it can eat it up, which is phenomenal. I was playing this thing with my Heatran. I went for a Magma Storm, and it ate it up. It just ate it up. It didn't die. I was like, What? It did 98%. I was like, that's that's nuts, dude. It's it's nuts how bulky this thing is. Oh, and that was a zero HP, um, zero spit F1. It, it, it was able to eat it up. Like, it's crazy good. Uh, not to mention the coverage is extremely nice. Uh, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Aura Sphere, Fleur Cannon. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a 130 base power fairy type move. It's basically Draco Meteor, but it's fairy type. So, yeah, fairy already, fairy's already broken. So, the, I've used a couple of sets. I've used Specs with... Uh, Flare Cannon, Flash Cannon, or a Sphere Volt Switch. Very cool. A uh, really fun set to use. Uh, not to mention, again, this thing gets Soul Heart, which means whenever something dies to it or dies on the field next to it or whatever, no matter what, if something dies when this thing is out, it's getting that plus one special attack and it's going to be a Savage. Let me show you a replay that actually showcases one of the, my favorite sets that my friend Lefties actually showed me, which was Shifty Gear, Z Move, uh, Magirna. Now, Z Move Flash Cannon turns into a move called Corkscrew crash or something corkscrew crash or clash i don't know anyway it becomes a 160 base power flash cannon let me show you this game all right so right here you'll see um you right here you'll see exactly what happens we got the turn 53 it's still 4-4 uh mantine then he sacked his latios and then this is what happened he went to measure and went for a shift gear okay this is the first time i saw this set i was very unsure so we got the plus two speed it does nothing as you can see because magirna spadef is so good and it's just so he goes for t-bolt he gets the plus one and then it just it, it all it all goes bad from that um it basically all goes bad from there flash cannon did he go for corkscrew crash yeah corkscrew crash right there corkscrew crash 160 base pen uh base so basically at any point he could set up he could set up on lopany he could set up on age of Slash, he could set up on ferrothorn he could set up on tapu coco and he could set up on mantine the only thing that really killed him was lander's t lander's eye he basically could have set up at any time i mean he waited he was playing it safe which is fair of course uh, but he could set up at any time and it just it destroyed the entire higher team like this thing is an incredibly good set i would i recommend everyone try it out it's uh shift gear at aura sphere t-bolt and flash cannon z move again z move steals them z or whatever 
really insane set uh, really really cool i've been using it a ton and it's just been doing like so much for me so yeah definitely recommend trying out my gear it's very very fun it's it's like it's super fun to use honestly um and it's very very good and powerful so yeah give this thing a try and with that we'll move on to the fourth best mod no, number four we have none other than tapu lele this thing is really really cool um again another tapu form all the tapus and all the ultra beasts are just kind of the best like i know this video is sort of seeming like a bunch of ta uh, tapu forms and then a bunch of ultra beasts but honestly that's not the case i mean we had stuff like toxapex uh celestial well that's an ultra beast tapu fini but like it's true though the ultra beast and tapus they stand out the most as being some of the best pokemon so like that's why they are a big part of this list but anyway we have tapu lele here now this thing basically if you guys don't know which i, I assume most people know by now uh, the reason this thing is so sick is because of its ability, um, Psychic Surge, which A, I, I think that's, yeah, what's it called? Yeah, yeah, which basically A, allows this thing to be immune to all priority, and B, it lets its Psychic, uh, basically, what's it called? Its Psychic can't be resist, like its Psychic type moves. Um, so when you switch into stuff like Heatran and that kind of thing, they're taking a neutral hit, which is stupid good. To, uh, give you more information, its speed is 95, which is really nice for a Pokemon that doesn't even look that fast. Um, its HP and physical defense are pretty mediocre, but whatever. Special attack is 130 base, so Latios level and 115 spadef. Um, resistances wise, it doesn't really have any good resistance. I mean, fighting Psychic and Dragon are good resistances, um, but it doesn't have, like, a lot is what I'm trying to say. But that's fine when you're coming in with this insanely powered up Psychic due to Psychic Terrain. Like, oh my god, it hits so so hard dude it hits so freaking hard the spec set is a complete savage the scarf set is extremely hard to deal with that's a fact the scarf set is so hard to deal with um yeah i've been having a lot of trouble dealing with it myself just because if you don't have like an age slasher a fair thorn or like a mantine or something it hits very hard you're if you don't have a resist it's just going to clean your team very very easily like it's it's very very strong to give you an idea of its damage let me like put, let me you know, i'm about to like pull up a calc right now let me go to the damage calculator um, and let me just let me just try this out. Tapu Lele, uh, max special attack. Let's just do Timid, because uh, I wouldn't use Modest with this thing. It has really nice speed. We'll do Psychic Terrain, and we'll just do it versus a la uh, random Lander's T at max HP. Hold on, a random max HP Lander's T. Yeah, so Psychic does 69 to 82 to a max HP Lander's T with no boosting item. That's just that's stupidly high. Tim and Nature, it's it's that that is so ridiculously strong. Like it just God, it's so good. It's so damn good. And like it's it's amazing. And if and if that Landers has no HP, it's doing 83 to 98. I'm just giving you Landers is like a decently bulky Pokemon. It's taking a neutral hit. Very, very strong. Psychic Fairy is a very nice typing as well because Fairy and Psychic are just two good ty uh, good typings to have offensively with its moves. Um, it really doesn't need moves besides Psychic, Moonblast, and like HP Fire and or Focus Blast, um, which is cool. Again, it's resistant to priority, so it can't even be revenge killed. Uh, it basically beats Scizor because you can run HP Fire and they can't bullet punch you, which is actually really, really funny. Um, something I saw that was like just kind of cool, a Pokemon that's so weak to Scizor's moves, but like it can't actually be hit by a bullet punch because of Psychic Terrain. Um, yeah, which is pretty awesome because I remember I was watching someone play and they said GG because it was Scarf Tapu Lele, but they had banded Genesect in the back. They clicked E Speed, Psychic Terrain said hell no, and he just died and he lost the game. <laughs> that was funny. Um, but yeah, Tapu Lele. Uh, honestly, the only sets I've really seen are Scarf and Specs because it's just it's such a hard hitter that you're better off just taking advantage of what its item can do for it. I saw someone toy around with Calm Mind, but honestly, it seems inferior to the other options, which are again choice. So with that, let's move on to the third best Pokemon on this list. We got none other than my boy. The second this man was released, I said he's going to run the game. And, I mean, we're like three or four days into the meta, and it's been doing a pretty damn good job of it. Tapu Koko has been one of the most, like, shaken up the meta Pokemon that uh, Gen 7 was able to bring about. Um, its stats, very, very nice. 130 base speed. Uh, 95 special attack is actually pretty damn mediocre. 95 is not that much. For some reason, they gave it 115 base attack. Yeah, physical electric types, LOL. Like... Electivire, but yeah, I don't know why they gave it uh, a good physical attack and like a mediocre special attack. But the speed is really what shines alongside uh, Electric Surge, which brings Electric Terrain. This thing is extremely good. Uh, it's definitely deserving of being top three, I believe. I, I consider it to be uh, definitely one of the best. I can think. I, I honestly believe that after most of the initially broken stuff, Genesect, Aegislash, Pheromos are banned. Um, that this thing will just become the absolute best and probably does have a chance of getting banned. I've been telling around with a couple of sets. One that I really like is uh, Calm Mind Roost. 
Uh, Electric Fairy has nice enough typing, and um, Tapu Koko, its defense is aren't, it's like, its defense sets aren't amazing, um, but once it gets up a Calm Mind, it's able to eat a lot of hits, it can roost off, it forces a ton of switch-ins, and then all you really need is Bolt Beam coverage in T-Bolt and HPIs. T-Bolt's already strong enough to Oko a lot of stuff. I remember I was using this set, and I was Calm Minding up, and I was able to 1v1 in Aegis Slash pretty easily with a roost, and then I just swept the rest of his team. Um, like, yeah, this thing is cool. Uh, the offensive set is also very nice with Life Warp, Thunderbolt, Grass Knot, HP Ice, Dazzling Gleam. I saw someone using Brave Bird, in fact, with a naive nature. Because, uh, again, it is 115 base attack, and Brave Bird's able to snipe stuff like uh, Amoongus and Venusaur, which is pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, this thing is, like, it's very, very nice. It just, it doesn't even really need coverage just because the Electric type moves hit so hard. Uh, the only thing that really annoys me is that they didn't give it Moonblast, they gave it Dazzling Gleam instead, which is, like, okay. Because Life Orb Dazzling Gleam is still capable of, like, to it killing Lander's eye and stuff like that, but I mean, the the big selling point of this thing is just how hard its electric type moves hit. That's why um, I've been having a lot of trouble dealing with it myself. Like when people use specs, that's a complete bitch to run around. Um, I don't like choice personally because everyone's running Lander's, and I just don't like playing around having to dazzling gleam that thing. And you just you, I want to be able to switch moves with something like this, especially when its speed is that good. I don't want to restrict it to specs. Um, but like I said, Life Orb T Bolt is just really, really hard for Pokemon to switch into. I remember I cleanly took a KO in Aegis Lash, which is just stupid to think about with a neutral move like that. But yeah, Tapu Koko, um, not much more to say. Use this thing, it's a beast. It's gonna be the best when everything else gets banned. That, like, I'm 100% I'm sure about that fact. So, with that, let's move on to none other than number two. So, at number two, we have your boy Feromosa. Now, this thing, this thing will get banned. There's no way it will not get banned. It's way too busted to not get banned. Um, this thing is stupid good. Uh, its defenses are piss, just trash. But it has 137 attack, 137 speed, one I mean 151 speed and 137 uh, attacks, both attacks, um, 137 and 151 speed. So, not to mention it has beast boost, which means it can just boost its speed or attack or special attack. I know CBB likes to use modest scarf. Uh, to hit 600 speed, and then every time you get a kill, you're getting a plus one attack boost, which is like, oh my god. Um, its resistances and whatever don't matter because it dies to a rapid spin anyway. Um, its coverage is stupid good. High jump kick, U-turn, bug buzz, ice beam, poison jab. Oh my god. It's so damn good. It keeps getting those plus ones. To give you an example of what it can do, hold on, let me pick up. All right, this this game is just basically a friendly, but I just found it, and it's it, it, it looks pretty. It, it, it'll look like, you, you'll, see, you'll see what Pheromos is capable of. This guy just has his team. Uh, Pasho and Super Marshall. So he leads off a Feromosa. Brave Bird dodge, dodge. Okay, I mean, Focus Blast three times dodge, as you can see, best move in the game. LOL. He uses his Suicide Scarm to get up all those hazards. He U turns out there, gets up by Life Orb, um, goes into Landers, taunt. Um, yeah, eventually it dies, and then the game just ends. He literally goes into Feromosa, and the game literally ends. Look how much this Focus Blast does. LOL. 62. 62. He switches out there because he's like, okay, I got a Life Orb stall. Goes into his Tapu Coco. Look how much this Ice Beam does. 65 like this thing is so busted it's speed stupid it gets boosts every time it kills something it goes into tornadoes death death straight up death goes into charizard focus blast ice beam then the end it's okay you can blame it on pasha having a team that's like like not su super bulky and like i guess but whatever it doesn't matter dude this thing is deoxys reincarnate and it's much better it's much better because it's way freaking stronger um it just has such good moves. Beast Boost is busted. I hate Pheromones. I hate playing against it. And the only reason it's, like, manageable right now is because the bullshit that is Aegislash is allowed in the tier 2. So they, like, cancel each other out. Or it doesn't cancel each other out. Aegislash cancels out Pheromosa. Nothing cancels out Aegislash. Um, but yeah, this thing, it, it's, it gets Quiver Dance too, which is pretty funny. And it gets Rapid Spin. I know Joey ran Rapid Spin. Um, but it gets uh, Quiver Dance. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a bad set. It gets Roost, too. <laughs> if you're gonna, you know dodge those i mean you, can, you probably can't roost on anything but yeah it's pheromos is busted um definitely something that's going to inevitably get banned just because of how good it is um and that's just a fact i'm not just like i'm not just uh speculating it'll get banned no it will like it's it's too busted to continue on in the tier um very very good pokemon but it is not the best the best pokemon is something that i i did not expect this thing to become the best pokemon and then it got released and i realized holy shit this thing is unbeatable zygarde perfect form zygarde complete form whatever this thing is so dumb it is so dumb if you guys saw the live me and cbb did it is so stupid it oh my complete form first of all complete form has 216 base hp it doesn't die to anything man it doesn't die to anything at all i was playing with this earlier this dude sent in his max attack scarf lander's t to break my sub with earthquake but the sub didn't break this dude i, I had a pincer out versus uh zygarde i had plus three attack on my pincer return did 85 I sent out my Lander's I went for an Earth Power. Earth Power did 35. It's, this thing is unkillable. 
Land's Wrath is a just inherently broken move on its own because it's mono attack that can kill everything. And it has options in Coil and Dragon Dance to where it can just not care about anything. It's Zygarde complete form is extremely busted. Um, I think it's also going to get banned. No, it, I'm not not even I think it will get banned. This thing is another thing that's going to inevitably get banned because it cannot be beaten. It cannot be freaking killed by anything. It sets up on everything and Thousand Arrows is just so dumb. Thousand Arrows is just so dumb. It's ugh, This Pokemon's dumb. I really liked, like, at first I really liked it, and then after, like, five or six games, I realized, actually, this thing is going to inevitably get banned because it's it's just not, it's, you can't deal with it. Um, like, it hits more than 600 HP which with investment, which is stupid. Uh, minimum, it's, like, 573 or whatever. It has good bulk. Its defense is 121. Um, its spadef is 95, and it still retains its good speed and attacks that Zygarde is... <laughs> Zygarde is honestly something else. I never expected something as bad as Zygarde and XY to end up becoming like so freaking good. It's like, God, it's it, just give it a try. Just give it a try, or or watch the live I did with CBB because it actually can't lose. It can't lose. Z the complete form is just very very weird, um, honestly. But yeah, give it a try. Um, the sets are basically DD plus land, uh, plus thousand arrows or coil plus thousand arrows, and then rest talk because you literally don't need anything else. Sub is also really really good. Sub is very very hard to deal with. Um, but yeah, like this thing is just it's done. It can't be killed. I'll, I mean, I'm gonna go through some calcs right now just to show you guys what it's capable of doing. Look at this damage, 27 to 31 from one of the strongest moves in the game. And the coil set is capable of just pulling shit off like this Rick just never dies. And it's it's ridiculous. Uh, again, I prefer Dragon Dance, honestly, but coil itself, the bulky set, is just it, it, it does wonders. Some some of this stuff some of these calcs are just like stupidly good. Look how much Moonblast. Okay, why is it level 50? Look at how much Moonblast does. 22 to 27. It's just like it's it's just like how? How is this thing as fat as it really is? It's it's so stupid. And like that's not to say physical attacks don't like not do a lot either okay why are you coming at 50 look at this cc 26 to 30 just, just 26 to 30 it's like it, it it can't be killed by literally anything it literally can't be killed i'm, I'm gonna see how much greninja ice beam does that that has to kill that has to kill there's no way it doesn't because you're an ice 76 to 90 stab life or ice beam shit is nuts ladios draco let's see 64 to 76 from a life from Draco. That's baby food. Let's let's see without any. Okay, yeah. Then it can then it's capable of it. But like as you guys can see, Zygarde is incredibly tanky. Um, very very strong as well. Uh, well, it's not strong, but Thousand Arrows makes up for all of its flaws uh, offensively. So that's basically the list of the top 10 Sun and Moon Pokemon I really wanted to touch upon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just love doing competitive analysis. So I really wanted to be able to do this one. Uh, basically get uh, some of your guys' thoughts as well in the comments. What you guys think is good. What you guys think is don't good. Let me know what you disagree with. Um, but there's one thing you can't disagree with zygarde is the best pokemon it truly is and yeah um let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the future for competitive analysis or videos where i'm just discussing the game or just discussion videos in general because i do like doing showdown lives but honestly my favorite videos to do are these and uh when you guys tell me in the comments what you guys want to see um like i'm really really happy to do those top tens in general competitively i really like doing so again let me know below what you guys want to see what you guys thought of this video and later y'all i'm out